and welcome to another Looney Tunes review video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to follow my journey to review all 1000 classic Looney Tunes shorts and give this video a like as well. Joining me for this review is my good friend from This Means Podcast, Jonathan Graves. Say hi. Hi, Anthony. How are you? I'm very good. We're going to be discussing a wonderful cartoon by the name of Long Head Hair, released on the 25th of June, 1949. It's the 559th in the series, and it's directed by the great Chuck Jones. You can currently find this, well, <laughs> just about everywhere, really, but if you need it on disc, it's on the Looney Tunes Gone Collection Volume 1 and on the Platinum Collection Volume 2 set. I have links in the description below. And... For the, what is it, maybe 1% or maybe less of people that have not seen this cartoon, well, it's very straightforward. Bugs is just minding his own business, playing some music, you know, a rainy night in Rio, and this opera singer is not happy because he's trying to practice for his concert, and he annoys Bugs to the point that Bugs decides to go up against him at the Hollywood Bowl. So, believe me when I say, if you haven't seen this one, you would have seen it in some form. <laughs> it's that popular. It's that well known. Ladies and gentlemen, there will be an unavoidable interruption in the program. The speaking voice, or the grunting, if you will, by the opera singer is done by Mel Blanc, but the singing voice was actually unknown for the longest time, but it's now confirmed to be Nikolai Shutarov, if I said it correctly, and Michael Barrier confirms that in his audio commentary, which I do encourage you to listen. Now, the Leopold reference, uh, some of you may not get the reference, especially if you haven't seen Fantasia, but it's a reference to the conductor Leopold Stokowski, who is perhaps well known today for, as I said, being the conductor in Fantasia, although he's been caricatured many times in Water Brothers shorts up until this point. He famously did not use a baton, hence the baton joke that you see, and he actually did conduct many performances at the Hollywood Bowl where the, this short is set. An editor version, and this is where a lot of us would have seen this cartoon the first time, I know it's happened with me, but this short appeared on the Bugs Bunny Roadrunner movie, which was a compilation of some of the best Chuck Jones works in one nice little package. And lastly, Course you know, this means war. That's a reference to Groucho Marx. So, Jonathan, I hear that this is one of your favorite Bugs Bunny shorts. Is that correct? That is correct, and for good reason. This is the epitome of Michael Maltese and Chuck Jones getting that formula of counter-revolutionary within the formula of Bugs going up against an adversary who does him wrong to a T. It's perfect in execution. It builds anticipation for Bugs to get retribution against Giovanni Jones here. And he brings down the house literally on Giovanni in the end. It is the perfect way to wrap up and build to a wonderful climax that is not only hilarious, but it is in character. And it's the best performance, one of the best performances we've ever had of Bugs Bunny. And the character is designed to work in almost any iteration uh, from this point on within this formula. And so like they nailed it. Indeed, yeah, it, it's, it really is a fantastic one, and as I said before, I mean, a lot of us have seen this cartoon, and one of the dangers I realized earlier on when I was doing this series is, how will I be approaching these quote-unquote overplayed shorts? But you know what? They're overplayed sometimes for a reason, and this one really, really truly is a classic. For example, I mean, look at the use of music in this. I mean, how great is the music in this one? <laughs> What do they do in Mississippi when skies are drippy? Well, it's phenomenal, and you could only have this level of orchestra and this level of depth within the, the musical instruments that Bugs plays at the beginning, all the way to the brass and the orchestra that plays behind Giovanni at the opera from a studio like Warner Brothers that had an entire catalog of musicians at the ready for Carl Starling to utilize for creating a cartoon like this. And they did it to the nth degree. Like they brought in a banjo player, they brought in a tuba player, and a harp, like a harp is played in this by Bugs Bunny and it sounds authentic. It sounds amazing. 
And if I just like played this in the background and listened to it, it would be music to my ears, like a vinyl going off and just hitting every note correctly. That's how perfect this is musically. Exactly right. I mean, these days, sure, a composer would typically just do it on a keyboard. I know I'm oversimplifying perhaps, but they would just pretty much have a keyboard that could do any type of instrument, but it's just not the same. It's not the same as a proper orchestra. The songs that are done here, I mean, you've got, of course, uh, Largo Al Factorum. My friend Matty is going to probably hound me later on because he's, he's got a master's in music to, to say, master's in music, and he's probably going to as you say that I've been butchering all these names, so apologies. <laughs> How many times have we heard uh, Largo Al Factorum, you know, from the Barber of Seville, you know, la, 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 sure. la. Yeah. They say that a lot of people learn to opera music from these Bugs Bunny shorts, and well, that's true for me, and I'm sure it's true <laughs> for many of us. And true for, true for me as well. Yeah, and it's so good. But the funniest thing I've noticed is is this sextet, which is called uh, Chi Mi Frena Ital Momento. And again, I probably butchered that. Uh, or we all could probably maybe try and sing, you know, Jimmy Fred, I enter moment. Oh, that's awful, awful. Sorry. So <laughs> I'll, I'll watch my subscriber count go backwards now. But <laughs> no, no, not at all. It's a good effort. <laughs> now, that was interesting because I was looking into some of these uh, for this review, and this, and th- that's actually a sextet, which is a piece sung by six people. And am I to believe that this opera singer thinks so highly of himself that he could sing all six parts <laughs> in the I beginning? Think so. I think so. <laughs> it, it must have been it must have been a joke. Either Jones or Maltese that did that, or maybe it was a choice of song by uh, Carl Starling. I'm not really sure, but someone had to have picked that for that little cheeky joke because it's it's so funny once you realise that yeah, that's supposed to be a, a sextet. I wanted to ask you something if you agree with me on this. Now, when of course we we hear Bugs Bunny playing a rainy night in Rio, he's of course got the banjo. And I personally have always thought the reason they picked the banjo is because it's seen as a uh, quote unquote backwards sort of music, you know, like country music, just as music that doesn't matter compared to the snobbishness of the opera. Would you agree with that? That would be why they perhaps picked the banjo for Bugs in that scene? Yes, it's probably to accentuate the opposite of what Giovanni is doing, which is a elevated type of music performance and bugs is just livening up the the wooden atmosphere around him of the trees and you know the the forest and he's just trying to you know keep to himself and and enjoy a little ditty (laughs) indeed Uh, because the the wrong person hears him that's all that happens (laughs) yeah exactly right it's just minding his own business playing a bit of banjo i mean who doesn't want to be left alone and play play a bit of banjo in their spare time you know i mean (laughs) Gotta love, of course, you hear the you hear the actual authentic opera d- done by the singer. But I love those little bits where the singer makes makes a mistake and starts singing along with bugs. One and two and three and four, she dances all day long. Oh my gal is a high born step. My gal is a high born lady. Hearing those done in opera style, <laughs> it's just so. I get a kick out of that. I mean, how good is that? Oh, it's great! It's great, and you know the the changing of tempo is is delightful. <laughs> yeah, exactly you know one and two and three you know just it's just so good it stays rhythmically in sync though and uh, which is a, a testament to the animation team and and everybody working with chuck jones and ken harris like the, the entire rhythm of the cartoon never slows down never falters it just keeps going and going and it's just phenomenal work uh, exactly right and ken harris of course he, he would be typically the, the like a dance animator or an action animator as i've said uh, learned it's such a great great animation there moving on to of course after the whole you know of course you realize this means war we're at the hollywood bowl and these jokes just crack me up, <laughs> you know. For example, and, and sometimes it's even the minor things, like how Bugs just says to the maestro, "Break into a vamp till we get back, maestro." The maestro just does it. <laughs> like, when, when when does that happen in the real world? It's just. <laughs> oh, Mr. Jones, 
Mr. Jones, wait. Oh, please, wait. Oh, Mr. Jones, Frankie and Perry just aren't in it. You're my swooner dreamboat lover boy. <laughs> well, I, I love the, the dialogue there. It's, oh, Mr. Jones, Frankie and Perry just aren't in it anymore. You're my swooner dreamboat lover boy. And I, a lot of people out there might not know what Frankie and Perry are referring to. That's Frank Sinatra and Perry Como, who you'll uh, recognize yes. from a lot of Christmas songs <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> uh, but they were they were the next big thing like back then. And, you know, they were huge. And just the fact that Bugs is like n- the Giovanni Jones's number one fan. That's his costume <laughs> to get him to like hold dynamite <laughs> is just brilliant. Exactly. And he's, and he's only fan apparently because I don't see groups of, you know, I suppose groupies or whatever you want to call them. Sure, <laughs> After sure. <an> opera scene. <laughs> but, but no, you're right. It's just such a typical late forties teenager type thing that they would have worn. It's so good. He goes through all the effort, even putting on lipstick. That's why I love. He goes the extra mile. Not that scene. he braids his hair. He braids his ears. He braids yeah. his ears like hair. <laughs> Indeed. It's just so, so good. I want to point out also the alum joke, which everyone loves, and I love it too. Uh, that actually originated in Back Alley Opera, which was co-written by Michael Maltese at the time. And it just goes to show you, I think Fris Freeling, another you know, Luigi's director, of course, he is unfairly criticized for reusing jokes in a lot of his shorts. And sure, he did do that. But even people like Michael Maltese, he did it. He reused jokes because these things were not meant to be seen one after another, or at least not intended to anyway, um, back in the day, not to be binge watched. So if (laughs) if something worked really, really well, of course you're going to reuse it. And here it's it's done so well. And you you pointed out an animated part in that, which makes it work so well. Yes. Whenever you watch this again, look at his hands. Uh, Giovanni's hands really add to what is happening here. And if his hands had just gone stagnant, like down by his sides and the head had shrunk, I feel like it would feel inauthentic to the moment and to the character, but his hands are like moving and like wondering what's happening as well as, as well as his head is shrinking and it doesn't feel like jump cuts. It it feels like it's, it's actually happening to him and he's freaking out about it and it adds to the comedy of the character. Of course. And speaking of comedy, I think you and I can agree the best and perhaps most memorable part of this short is the whole ending gag where once you see quote unquote, Leopold entered the, the stage. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you've got the anticipation, you know, the whole thing where Bugs is, you know, got these strong poses. He breaks the baton. He's getting ready. And even the s- quick shot of Giovanni slicking back his hair, doing up his tie, getting ready just for that right moment. Of course, the vocals, what, what, you know, once he starts doing them are, are amazing. But what I wanted to point out here is how the gag is taken to the absolute extreme. And it's similar to the recent water cup gag in Mississippi Hair, where it's like, it's Michael Maltese clearly playing with time here, seeing mm. how far he could push things. And here, you know, it, it's a dangerous thing to do in a short, really, because you only got so much time in a short. But here, my goodness, it works so well. I mean, what do you think of that last gag? I mean, I'm sure you love it, but... It does. It, it, it works so well, but also it's so brilliant to use the glove as like an inanimate object that is personified as Bugs's hand and now he's he's able to control it and leave it up there as Giovanni's just belting out his lungs and bringing the entire house down uh, this was set up earlier when Bugs gets to the bowl he's on top of the the entire cathedral and like he he knocks on it because it's like acoustically sound and so like if he bangs on it it will vibrate the entire thing and it vibrates Giovanni into the base into the pit and so at the end when he is making him just explode from the inside out it is so well choreographed everything is really well choreographed from an animation standpoint and then you have bugs go off and write a letter to some order uh to order some headphones and they arrive just in time for him to like have them on as you know giovanni is like bringing the house down it, it's just brilliant it's, it's brilliant all around exactly i absolutely love it i know as a kid i was pretty much like Giovanni, I was, I was nearly out of breath and I'm laughing so much. I mean, it's so, so good. <laughs> That's so good. But just to slowly wrap things up, though, I mean, we got to give this a rating. And, you know, I was leaning between 9.5 and 10. But, you know, the more I think about it, the more it's a 10 out of 10 cartoon. It's perfect. It really is from start to finish. Even if you're perhaps 
not as much as a Jones fan. Like some people are more Clapper fans and whatnot. I mean, you, you can't deny it. this is a perfect car too from start to finish. So yeah, 10 out of 10. I'm giving you a 10 out of 10. Perfect score. You know, I think they said, I think the phrase is, if you do something for 100 hours, you can do it without thinking about it. So this is the 60th cartoon from Looney Tunes with Bugs Bunny in it. And I feel like, I don't know how many hours it took to get here, but they finally nailed it. And this is absolutely a 10 out of 10. This is endlessly rewatchable and it's endlessly repackaged for that reason. This is a great introductory short as well. Uh, when I started my podcast, this is the one of the first shorts I went to. And I was like, I have to talk about this one first within the top five or, you know, first five. And it couldn't hold more true today than it did then. So I retain my rating. It's a perfect Looney Tunes short at 10 out of 10. I totally agree. And, ju- and just because something is overplayed, I mean, again, yes, on the one hand, you discover all these other gems going, oh, I wish that they played this when I was younger. But honestly, playing this one over and over again, well, it's a great one to do. At least it- there is that. So we'll wrap this one up here. Thank you so much for joining me on this. And if- you can also give me the link to the- your actual podcast for this short as well. I'll put that in the uh, description below, plus the podcast itself. So make sure if you guys haven't subscribed, please do so. It's a great podcast. I listen to it myself. So trust me. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Thank so you. Tra- trust me. I'll tr- try and do the, the whole Italian thing. But no, thanks very much for listening, guys. And until next time, take care. See ya. Bye.